Okay. Today I'd like to talk about learning to learn. And uh, one of the really remarkable or, or sort of uh, learning experience for me has been visiting uh, many of the Commonwealth campuses. And, uh, uh, you know, and going into classes cold really, it ranged from a theater class to uh, uh, contemporary literature class to educational psychology class, so a real range of classes. And then thinking about, you know, what do I have to offer these students? And I thought about how unique art is. And the uniqueness of art is very much it's about questions and uh, asking questions and having that sense of wonder. And it's also very much about the subjective. It's about the personal and what we bring to the table. And sometimes we don't know what we bring to the table. So just asking questions of students like, what circumstances of, or events in your life have most influenced who you are? And they responded by a range of things. You know, one person said, I grew up on a farm and uh, nature influenced me. The other person said, I was in, my family was in a horrible car accident and that sense of uh, uh, life's fragility at a young age has influenced me the rest of my life. And then, you know, someone uh, also said, uh, I was raised by my grandmother who happened to be a minister. So a wide range of things. And I was struck by the, their importance of relationships. And I asked them, what single word uh, would you choose that's the most characteristic or a quality that you most value in relationships? And uh, uh, a vast number, like a third at least, said trust or honesty. And I was intrigued by that. And I asked them, why do you think tr people said trust or honesty? And uh, I'll never forget a student said, because you really can't have love grow unless you have trust. And uh, sometimes at the end of a class, I'll just ask them to write a question about art and life, and we'll just open those questions up. And I remember one of them asked of sort of that old qu question, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? And I sort of threw that back at the class and said, anyone have an idea? And somebody said, said yeah, because it makes good people better. Uh, do things like have the students all look at their hands and think something meaningful that their hands have done. And that, they, that seems to stand out, and then they will share that with the person next to them, and they both share it back and forth, and then collectively the person they shared it with will share it with a larger group. Another exercise to do is sort of a data exercise, sort of a stream of consciousness, write down quickly uh, four nouns or objects, and then write quickly sort of four adjectives or things that describe. And one student wrote these four and wrote so I asked them to circle one in a noun and one adjective, and they circle chair and colorful and connected the two. And then I asked them to do a drawing. And they're always fun. I mean, the first time I did this, I tried to draw, draw a sublime toilet. And so this person did a, a chair, and I really liked how they depicted the colorful sense. And they obviously weren't using any color pens, so they did these radiating lines. So there's a sense of uh, uh, just pleasure and joy and laughter in doing this. And I think, you know, as I've said before, the biggest inhibitor of creativity is fear. And we try and create this safe place where people are just having fun and so forth. So I think these different exercises help people sort of find their own voice. And when you have a better sense of who you are, you have a better sense of what you want to say in your own artwork. So thank you for your time. Do you know how long that was, Coach? Uh,